Easy guys, Dom here from Cringy Dad Gaming. So today Ubisoft released information about the closed beta to open beta improvements for Ghost Recon Breakpoint. So anyone who played the closed beta had the opportunity to feed their feelings back to Ubisoft and Ubisoft have listened. They've made an awful lot of improvements ready for the open beta, which is coming later in September. Do check out their website for the details. However, there are some of you out there maybe like me 99% of the time it just can't be bothered to actually read through all the information and just literally want to listen to someone else read it out to you so that's what I'm gonna do there is a little bit of an opening statement on there for you guys to check out but the main character so they're gonna have better controls so higher control responsiveness so they've bullet pointed some of the main things they've changed so enhance responsiveness for the main character so that the controls feel smoother faster acceleration and stops of the main character resulting in a decreased feeling of inertia so that's good because i know one thing a lot of people were really kicking off about was the actual movements of the character in in terms of you know how the character ran and just generally moved so they've made some good improvements there let's hope that's going to feel a little bit smoother in the open beta which i'm sure it will they've also increased the speed of swapping your weapon so faster weapon swaps for increased responsiveness when changing weapons so that's also good i do like how in this little update they've added these little clips to be able to show you before and after it really does give you an idea of how much they've improved some of the these movements which is really good They've also got a faster stance change to adapt more quickly to the situation. So you will actually be able to go prone and also take a knee a lot quicker than you used to be able to. So just overall response time to be able to get down if there's uh, drones or enemies nearby, it's going to improve your chances of staying hidden, which in a stealth game is really important. Faster interaction with chests to loot them, that's good less paralysis time after your injury has been triggered so faster recovery of the controls and then faster entry into vehicles again something else that a lot of people are feeding back some of the times i did find some of the uh, weapons like the bazooka as well it, it was really quite a long time to be able to actually move after you'd used one um i found i got killed a few times by behemoths because of that and Hopefully that's going to be something that's addressed in this as well. Cancellation of ongoing action. So the ability to cancel opening the chest, ability to cancel car entries by moving the stick away from the interaction and faster cancellation of intel gathering interactions. So you may be doing some of these things and then find that you're in a combat situation. So rather than being stuck in the animation and getting shot or killed, you can literally cancel it to be able to move amongst other things. So better walk and rush animation. So new rush animation now means when you sprint in, uh, rush animation of the main character has been modified to be more natural, so it looks less unnatural, I guess. <laughs> There's definitely a difference between the two, and uh, you know I can't tell for sure just from this tiny little clip, but it definitely looks a little bit more realistic to someone running with a lot of kit. So you know these guys, heavy rucksack and weapons, it will change the way you run. It's not like this guy's running without any equipment. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever had like combat equipment on like this, but yeah, you ain't going to be able to sprint like you normally would. So I think they've got a good balance there but i'll be able to test that out a bit more alongside you guys once the open beta launches so walking a rushing realistic animation so better terrain analysis when running to more accurately display correct animation so camera better camera for shooting from vehicles camera framing from passenger seats has been improved for better shooting opportunities that's good because we all like a drive by every now and then don't we eh? me and my g's you know <laughs> so you guys that like a good drive by that's that's for my g's co-op replication improvement so debugged online replication of other ghosts 
Many fixes for various replication issues while playing in co-op to ensure more coherent visuals and prevent unintended behaviour like sliding, teleportation and incorrect positioning. Very important, that sort of thing. Uh, there's nothing worse than someone teleporting everywhere. You know, it's a bit crazy, but there you go. It's not the fly, if any of you guys remember that film. Anyway, debugged online replication of NPCs. Many fixes for various replication issues with NPCs to ensure more coherent visuals and prevent unintended behaviour like sliding to teleportation and incorrect positioning. So... Very similar to that, actually. It's probably exactly the same thing, just repeated. It's That's quite funny, actually, because they say they want to debug replication, but they've almost got replication here. But hey, that's a totally different thing. It's just me being me. Anyway, vehicles, handbrake and drifting behaviour. So improved handbrake behaviour on vehicles, which allow the players to better handle stroke control the vehicle while drifting, which is really good because I did find that in Wildlands, it took them a while to get the vehicle handling kind of to a point where it actually felt playable. I think, again, in Breakpoint, it's one of those things that is better than what it was when Wildlands first come out, in my opinion, but there's still some work to be done. So that will be good to see. Although here it shows the old first and then the new so it's hard to see it side by side although you can see that it wasn't as smooth going around the corner before and it's definitely much smoother uh, although they could have got caught on something now i don't know anyway let's move on to slopes ground vehicles are less affected by the angle of slopes to provide a less frustrating and more coherent driving experience so maybe that is what that is also there maybe they're getting caught on a bit of a slope um who knows anyway <laughs> traveling with helicopters more accessible so more helicopters are distributed to grant greater ease of access to the open world sparrow helicopter is now available by default at the bivouac right away which is good because you don't want to be faffing around trying to find a helicopter if you want to go from one side of the map to the other more helicopter locations are available now and all helicopters are now shown in the era one shop menu without having to unlock them in the skill tree which is good Smart AI, really important for this type of game. So better behaviour. Improvements made to help, actually say, to help prevent NPCs from becoming stuck in walls. Yeah, we don't like NPCs getting stuck in walls. AI camp states are more reliable, resulting in consistent and logical behaviour. NPCs related to specific missions improved to better move and follow more accurately. Improvements made to provide more logical enemy sniper behaviour so they remain at or near their vantage points. NPCs will now take cover in a more realistic and logical way. So gameplay. Increase the window of opportunity to avoid the call for reinforcement. The time before the reinforcements arrive has been increased, meaning players will have more time to react and kill the archetype radio operator. Mortar is now far less precise to give players more opportunities to move and avoid the hits. Yeah, I was going to say, it's sometimes being sniped by mortar fire is a little bit frustrating. You think, how the hell are they that accurate with it? But, you know, it's something that they've taken on board, which is good. Wide range difficulty. So more accessible, easy and normal difficulty levels. I've noticed they've made quite a few improvements on this, maybe for people who are new to the game or just want a more casual experience. So regular difficulty level has been turned down a little bit to prevent difficulty peaks. Arcade difficulty level has been adjusted to be easier. Enemy AI are less powerful, meaning they do less damage than before. Life regeneration of the main character is faster. And aim assistance has been increased to make a wide area of tolerance in which the players don't have to aim precisely to target an enemy. So as you can see here in arcade mode, they've got a more precise aim assist. Gives you more precision. Again, for people who like that kind of snap-on, lock-on kind of fire for a more arcade experience, like where you get in something like Grand Theft Auto, it's there for you guys, so enjoy. So a more realistic experience in extreme difficulty. So people like myself who like more of a challenge and would usually play with no HUD or minimal HUD elements, the red lights on the map 
or it's kind of like a fog, isn't it? Uh, to indicate enemy presence have been removed to provide increased immersion and challenge. So with that, it's shown on the little mini map. You've then got to try and figure out where enemies positions are actually the good old fashioned way by either listening to their movements or having a sneaky peek around the corner like Nomad is here. So UX and UI shop menu. So the shop menu in Bivouac all the functionalities provided in the shop in Erewhon are now accessible at any bivouac in the world. So the Erewhon shop menu, they've improved menu feedback when buying or selling items, differentiated weapons and gear camos in the buy menu, and a shorter time for refresh of weapons and gear available for purchase. So that's good. I'm a little bit impatient. You see all these nice guns and you want to buy them, but you know, the refresh rate of uh, new stock coming into the shop, that's important to be relatively short. Otherwise I'll probably go away and won't come back and I'll forget about it and then go and play something else, which is not good. You want to keep people engaged. And I think that's a, a good way. People who like to use and try new weapons like me. Exploration icons. So improve the locations icons display on the tack map. Behemoth's area are now discovered by default on the tack map. Each behemoth displays the unique reward it gives when their challenge is complete. Location discovery using the drone recon has been improved to reward players with more intel. Unique item chests now have specific icons that promote the type of reward it contains example unique customization gear weapon blueprints or skill points so chests containing scale credits are marked with the basic chest icon exposition of mission intel is improved in the objective board and side quest mission givers in the open world are now easier to discover which is good because in a game where you're exploring and you want to find stuff is nothing worse than if it's really hard to find <laughs> just means you get frustrated running around in circles a more guided experience. So guided mode is now the default mode when beginning the game. Players can still switch between exploration and guided mode at any time using the in-game menu. I like how they've given you more of a choice there. You know, once you've maybe played the game for a little bit or played it through with guided mode, it means once you've picked up the kind of, you know, the, the, the way the game plays and how to do things, you could maybe turn that off to give you a more realistic rpg experience but starting off with guided mode is great i think for people who have not played the game or are new to it that's really good that they've done that and then non-equipped missions and objectives are now displayed on the tack map in guided mode which is good as well uh, i think in the closed beta trying to find some of the objectives and stuff like that for some people was a little bit difficult so they've made that a little bit easier now it's in guided mode that's good all undiscovered locations on the tack map are displayed in guided mode with question marks which is kind of what a lot of them were in wildlands so you at least get a rough idea of the area you need to be exploring I, I like that i do think that's a little helpful you know you can turn it off like it says but i, I just like the fact that that's there that's really good Increased UI display options. You can now choose if the map shows question marks for undiscovered locations in the gameplay menu if you wish to see points of interest already marked. So I kind of mentioned that just before. Error 1. So in Error 1, the offline avatars standing around the table are the player's friends instead of unknown players. That's a cool little thing. Progression. Progression balancing. Economy fixed various economy balancing issues challenges class challenges have been balanced to be more rewarding and saves fixed various issues that caused save files and or inventory to be lost now nah, we don't want to know that we don't want no saves or inventory being lost get that fixed now which is good um graphics on all platforms the improvements made to objects and level of detail to create a better visual experience to be honest with you though i've always found in a lot of betas maybe i don't know if this is just like kind of me imagining it but i've always kind of found that in betas closed or open that the graphics have always been better on the game release i don't know maybe they're not maybe it's it is rendered how it is but i just like a lot of these games i find that the graphics seem to be better when they fully release them than the betas maybe that's just me maybe i'm crazy actually no i am crazy as you guys know crazy and cringy right anyway we're nearly to the end it's a lot of stuff in it hey eh? um which is good it's good it shows how much they've listened to people and i like that right pc anyway so all you pc people listen up the options for textures on pc has 
better resolution now and better options offered to let players choose between visual quality versus frame rate which is also good although usually when you reduce the textures and shadows and whatnot usually you get a better frame rate from that anyway so it's kind of the same thing really but if there's an option pre-built in there so you don't have to fiddle around with loads of sliders and loads of numbers then that's good we will be adding continuous improvements to the game at launch, which will include weapon audio improvements, debug of vehicle entry interaction, better camera consistency with the main character, improved audio cues when concealed, hit, injured, etc., and improved audio on vehicles, slower vehicles like SUVs speed increased. So. I do like the fact that they're they're going to be changing that because when I was on a motorbike, man, it didn't sound right to me. It sounded, I don't know what it sounded like, but it definitely didn't sound like a motorbike. It was really beefy. Like, yeah, it's definitely not a, a normal motorbike unless it's exhausted, fell off or something. But there you go, guys. That's a lot of good improvements they're going to make or have made since the closed beta, ready for the open beta. Please do take note of the open beta forums where you can feed back your experience. You know, it's really good to give these guys constructive feedback. They don't want players to be unhappy. I see a lot of people going off on rants. And at the end of the day, this is the whole point of closed and open betas. It's for you to try it out to be able to help fix the bugs that you guys are going to come across, you know. So do be constructive with your feedback and let's make this game the best it can be. So I'll catch you guys on another video and thanks for watching. You're ready for this. Yo, who's the daddy?